Our first learning module in this round of the application, and our third overall, is attracting more female students into the skilled trades. It features Ivana Nunez, an electrical installation teacher at Queens Vocational and Technical High School in New York. Ivana has a particularly deep understanding of the challenges faced by girls who are thinking about entering the skilled trades. That's because she has seen them play out as a teacher and also felt herself having to overcome them as a student. Ivana graduated from Queens Vocational eight years ago and entered industry as an electrician before deciding to come back to her old high school and join the faculty. Now she works side by side with her first mentor and other teachers of hers who were so instrumental in helping her make good choices as a youngster. A couple of years ago, Ivana was invited by the White House to share her story at a Washington conference on empowering young women in non-traditional careers. Her message was simple. Skilled trades teachers can have a tremendous impact on their students, especially girls, because that's exactly what she experienced. My mentor was amazing in the sense that he never let me get away with saying, oh, I can't do it, or I'm not going to be able to accomplish that, Ivana told me. That was never an option. It's the same message that she now delivers to her own students. If you'd like to dig a little deeper into some of the concepts discussed by Ivana, you'll find additional material in our resource library. You can use the main menu to click ahead and draw upon this supplemental content to help you answer the relevant application questions, or you can dig in and explore it later at your convenience if you prefer. When I got into the electrical field, I didn't technically know much about the field, but I knew that I loved working with my hands. Um, and a lot of girls aren't informed. A lot of them aren't told, this is what the job entails, this is what you do, and you are able to do it. Um, it was always told that's for boys. So it was never made to motivate girls and to make girls say, this is what I want to do, I know what this is, so let me go and get it. I feel as though the amount of girls that we're getting now is a lot larger. Now we have, I, in my current class, I have five girls for 20 students that I have. So that, for us, is a major hit to then get another class. And each class now has five to six girls. So that is a definite improvement, not only in our electrical program, but in our plumbing program. We have a lot more girls involved. And it has definitely changed from when I graduated because I feel there was more emphasis now put into, let's get these girls knowledgeable about the field, about what is out there, and that they're not defined to one area. They don't have to do just one thing. They can explore and learn different things and different types of ideas. When I was a student here, they had started kind of like a pilot program, and it was with Legal Momentum. And I'm not sure if they're still working on it, but I know that we were kind of like that pilot program, that beginning program to really get girls involved and to get them to know the industry where they would take us to conferences and get us to get to know these other women in industry. So we would meet carpenters that were females, electricians, laborers that were all females. And to see the eye opener of all these students and to my former classmates see them say, whoa, she's a carpenter? Like, I would have never thought that. She's a laborer? Whoa, she's a steam fitter? I would have never thought that that's what she would be doing. And these women, and, and everyone thinks like, oh, if you work in the construction field, you can't dress pretty, you can't look pretty, you have to wear baggy clothes, and you have to look like a boy. Um, there is no stereotype. There is no set in stone what you have to look like or who you are. It's whatever you want. So here you have these women looking beautiful and dress how they want and they're carpenters or they're in the construction industry. I think definitely getting these girls knowledgeable of the industry, knowing what it is and knowing the type of work that it is, um, knowing the paths 
that even if you do begin as an electrician, you could become an electrical engineer and take over the company. Um, also knowing your demographics, knowing what, what's their culture, where do they come from, what, what is their background. Um, I know that here in this school, we have a lot of Hispanics. Um, and if you look into Hispanic cultures, it is a no-no for a girl to be in a male-dominated trade. And that is something that you kind of have to attack at the root, which is speak to parents. Speak to parents, get them to know, look, this industry is growing and blooming, and it's an opportunity that your daughter can have. Um, so getting parents involved, getting students to know what they're getting into, um, creating meetings, conferences where they can see other females in industry is, I feel, the basis of how we started to gain more girls. I was just speaking about this with my mentor, and he was my junior year teacher. So here's this, this man that kind of motivated me to become better than what I was and to be better than others, not in a bad way, but kind of growing my confidence knowing that as a female, it doesn't matter if I am a female or a male. We're doing the same job and we're going to get it done no matter what. So as a male, not choosing preferences, not saying, oh, you're a girl, so you can't carry this um, bundle of pipe because you can't, you just, you know, the girls don't do that. Um, but you'll pass it on to the boy in the sense that I tell all girls and all my boys, I will treat you all equally. There is no difference between you guys as long as you do the work. If you could get the job done, then that is what I am looking for. That is the main goal, to gain knowledge, to gain the skill, to be able to work in industry. That is the main basis. For a male teacher, it might be difficult because you can't relate, but you can help them feel as that they are able to do something without being judged for being a girl. Where something where you have an equal space where you could work in groups and work with other people and not feel singled out. I think that the most impact that usually happens, especially in our school, is during parent-teacher conference. When parents come in and they finally meet me, they walk in and they're like, you're Miss Nunez? Like, who, who this, is this a trick? Are we being punked? Like, that's the whole environment that they create. So I'm like, hi, like, I'm Miss Nunez. This is, this is my class, this is my student. Um, how are you? And the first thing you hear is, I don't want my daughter doing this. Like, this is not what she should be doing. Um, this is a man's job, and I don't want her getting dirty. And I have to kind of chuckle a little bit because I could hear that from my parents. Um, they weren't as strict telling me not to get into the field, but they definitely didn't want me to get into plumbing. Um, but they're very understanding. So here you have a parent who doesn't want to have their daughter come in, so I'm sitting there and I have to have a conversation, sometimes for an hour or two, to explain um, these are the opportunities, this is what she's going to be doing, and the first thing that you get is, but I want her to go to college. A stereotype that everyone thinks of and a stigma of construction is that you don't go to school. You have no education. Now that's a lie. In construction, you need education. You need to have knowledge. So here you are, you have to break down everything for these parents and telling them so many things. And it might not be just that day. You might have to bring them back or speak to them. Because I have had students come to me and say, Ms. Nunez, my parents still don't want me to come. Can we please have a conversation? I think this question is amazing in the sense that I went through it. So here I am, the only girl in an electrical classroom. And I'm not going to lie, I feel a little intimidated. I'm not going to show it. But I feel intimidated because I might not be able, I don't have the strength for it. Because 
this boy is six feet tall, 200 and something pounds, and here this, you know, four foot nothing, about 100 pounds at that time, <laughs> um, can't lift the same. So my mentor was amazing in the sense that never let me get away with sometimes saying, oh, I can't do it, or I'm not going to be able to accomplish that. That was never an option. If I didn't get it done and if it was not better, then there's going to be a problem. And it always challenged me. I was always on my toes. I was always trying to be better. I was always trying to um, become a better electrician. And then here you have, almost towards the middle of the year, have some of the boys come over to me and ask me, hey, can you teach me how to do this? Because I don't really know how to do this. So here I am teaching these boys how to do it. Now every situation is different. Um, some girls can't take command of a place. And sometimes you have to give them the job. You have to tell them like, I'm gonna give you a leadership role. This is what you have to do. And put them in a position in which they have to step up and become a leader. And that's what happens with a lot of students where if you don't give them the opportunity or if you don't elevate them and tell them, come on, we gotta go and you have to step up, they won't learn how to kind of defend themselves or to step up for themselves and not be able to be intimidated. I, I dealt with this in industry. These guys are, are huge. And here this, this little one trying to help or, or stuff like that, but my, my mechanic would never let me go. He would never tell me like, it's okay, just sit there. We would find a way to do it. So it kind of helps me, especially in the classroom, where I look at my students and they're like, miss, I can't do it. Even my boys. Sometimes it's not only the girls in the classroom. Sometimes I have the boys saying, miss, I, I can't screw in this group. I can't do it. I don't have the strength. And then now it comes into strategies. So you might not have the height, the weight, in order to lift something or the strength, but you could find strategies of how to lift that without exerting yourself, without using all your muscle strength, without hurting yourself. Now let's think of ways, how can I make sure that I could screw in the screw without hurting myself? And I would tell them, use all the body weight. Make sure they use your body weight when you're going to screw something in. Use your shoulder, push into it. Make sure that you're not only using your arms, but you're using your entire body weight in order for something like that to happen. So it's amazing to see them like, whoa, miss, like you're so little and you could do that. I was like, yes, but you have to learn. You have to think. You have to have these critical thinking skills. We'll have it on our website and you see our girls in ponytails and a hard hat with boots working, but here's a female. And look, she was even a student from here. So now they're looking at these pictures and they're like, wow, like this, now I can relate to this. Unions are very helpful in that sense that they will bring in uh, female workers that are from the construction industry and if you ask them and you tell them hey I have a group of students or I have some female students that would like to know more about the industry but we don't have someone they can relate to. Former graduates is another amazing resource where we have lists upon lists of students that have graduated and have gone to different types of unions and they're willing to come in and speak to the students during a career day, during a day that they're doing a conference or a CTE night in your school. So I think those are the, your best resources, especially when you don't have much. Unfortunately, society, and now that society is getting a little better, but society kind of dictates girls do this, boys do this, um, cultures do that too, families, a lot of people do and now it's just a challenge of telling people that's it's time to break that barrier it's time to get rid of it it's time for us to kind of boost these girls confidence and say look this is what it is it has nothing to do with your sex it has nothing to do with any of that it has nothing to do with your appearance 
this is the work that you have to do. It is expected from everyone and it's time to boost up your confidence. You can do it. And when they finish that first job, they're like, wow, like I did that. It turned on and it didn't explode. Like that's, they feel amazing that they could go home and say, mom, I installed a switch or I, the light turned on. I have them taking out their cell phones, taking pictures of their jobs because they are so proud of themselves. Sometimes you don't have to say anything. Sometimes you just have to kind of guide them and they're, they're able to find themselves without really knowing that that's what they're doing. Mm -hmm.